welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome, everyone. This is episode number 90 of the Sports Spectrum Podcast. My name is Jason Romano. It's so great to have you joining us here on the program today. Of course, you can subscribe and download this podcast everywhere podcasts are found, including Google Play, Stitcher, and Apple iTunes Podcasts. You can download the podcast on our YouTube channel as well. Just go to Sports Spectrum and every single podcast is there. And you can also find every single piece of content we produce over at Sports Spectrum Dot com where you can become a member for just $36 for one year, it takes care of your yearly membership, and it gives you a quarterly magazine that we produce. The next one is coming out very soon, as well as funding this podcast and all of the content that Sports Spectrum produces, including Football Sunday, including The Increase, including One Coach, including lots of really cool content ideas we have for 2018. So we just appreciate you. Uh, and I love that you could become a member with us and partner with all we're doing here at Sports Spectrum. Today's guest, this is a unique podcast, uh, one similar to the one we did a few weeks ago with the different Philadelphia Eagles players. This one features a conversation with rapper Andy Minio and Eagles tight end, free agent now tight end, Trey Burton. Uh, Trey Burton, of course, from the Philly special Super Bowl play that will put him uh, among the legends in Philadelphia sports history and helping the Eagles win their first ever Super Bowl championship. And this conversation came about with me talking to Andy. I had met Andy Minio at ESPN a few years ago, got to walk him around and give him a tour of ESPN. And I knew I wanted to have Andy on the podcast. And when I saw that he was at uh, a conference that I was attending as well recently, I went up to Andy and I just said, hey, man, can you come on the podcast? He said, yes, of course. And this conference also had a a bunch of NFL players there. And I asked Andy if he was close to any of the players. He said, yeah, I know Trey pretty well, uh, Trey Burton, and uh, maybe Trey would come on the podcast with me. So I said, yeah. So I asked Trey. Trey said yes. And this is how we kind of had this podcast put together. And I like it when we have two sort of different people coming together and just talking about, you know, different issues. We had this in... Episode number two, when we had Matt Hasselbeck, the former NFL quarterback, now ESPN analyst, talking to Matt Chandler, uh, who was the the pastor out of Dallas, Texas. And then we had it with Francis Chan, the pastor, of course, uh, out in California, and St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Adam Wainwright. And I just like when we kind of bring two people from two different scopes and just start talking and having conversations, real conversations. And this podcast got pretty deep. Now, it starts with Philly Special, of course, and we talk about the Super Bowl and have some fun there. But then we get into some deep topics about temptation, about faith. You know, Andy actually had a very deep, dark time in his life recently, and it challenged him in his faith. So he goes there and talks about that. And Trey talks about free agency, what that looks like, uh, being able to, uh, to kind of be out there as a free agent after winning the Super Bowl. And, you know, kind of being shopped around and what teams he gets to choose where he goes, which he's never really been able to do um, in his career, in his pro football career, and to kind of feel wanted, uh, which he was not able to do when he came into the NFL because he was an undrafted free agent. So I really think you guys will like this conversation a lot. It starts with Andy Minio. Uh, kind of wanting to get right into Philly special and the Super Bowl. So Andy, the first thing you'll hear is Andy asking a question to Trey Burton about Philly special and just the kind of nerves that were inside of him being excited about it. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Here he is, rapper Andy Minio and Eagles tight end, Super Bowl champion, now free agent, Trey Burton. Take a listen. So that play has to be like, the moment yeah. like that your tight end is throwing a pass you're are you crapping your pants or are you just so in the zone that you're like what i do this like i'm 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 ready this is regular yeah i would say i was really in the zone you know i'm i'm, I'm the type of guy like i want to make a play you know i want to like impact the game in, in a positive way obviously right. everybody does um but um just when the time came i just remember like i said looking up and boom break the huddle uh, i catch the ball and only person i saw was Foles. like i don't know if there was anybody in front of me or not like i don't even really know how open he was he was just the only guy i saw was there supposed to be other guys to no, go out for passes no, no. well there was another guy coming from the other side of the ball um but he was Way back. it was my they told me my number one option was to run it and but there was zero percent chance i was ever gonna run it he was so wide open i just had to he was a layup 
It was a layup, yeah, my can't brother. Miss. Yo, <laughs> you could have you could have punted it. You yeah. would have caught that. Is thing. Philly special designed for like a RP a run pass no, option? I mean, they told me like after after the couple times we ran in practice, they didn't really necessarily like the velocity I had on the ball. They said I threw it too hard, <laughs> and so they they tried to tell me, you know, uh, leading up to the game, like, hey, if it's there to run it, you can go ahead and you yeah. know <laughs> run it. Right. And uh, but no, I was always going to throw it every time. Always going to throw it. Every We're talking time. to Andy Minio and Trey Burton here on the Sports Spectrum podcast, Andy. Where were you that day? You're just watching the game from your house, just chilling yeah, with your buddies? Yeah, I'm organizing a last-minute uh, social gathering. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to be to watch the game. <laughs> right. You know, I know uh, Acho's down there. I know Trey's down there. A couple other guys that had just FaceTimed me, like, the week before. And What um, were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing when we This guy FaceTimes me. So my wife wanted to go on vacation. And so we go on vacation. Well, the weird part is she works on her feet all day. You know, she's doing uh, hair and stuff. And I'm sitting down in a recording studio, and I'm like, I don't want to go on vacation. But she's like, am I going to go on vacation? You don't join me? <laughs> Never do that. No. Uh, not, so, not, that's good That's good. So advice. I go on this vacation, and I, like, I'm forced to shut it down, uh, which is a good thing. We need to. But it was she needed the vacation more than I did. So I'm like, you're doing a lot of talking, bro, to make up for what you were, what you were doing. Uh, <laughs> I told you. But you still got to answer the, the question. The point was, bro, I get what. FaceTime and I'm sitting in a hot tub, and I, from Iacho, and I look up, and I, and uh, you know these dudes are sitting around having steaks. Like, what are you doing? And the worst part is, they said, "When's your next album coming out?" I'm like, "Trust me, I've been working hard." Yeah. I'm sitting in the. You know, the sauna, like, looking like a schmo, like I'm doing nothing with my life. We figured, I thought he retired because he hasn't had anything in a while, you know what I'm saying? So Magic and Bird. August, yeah. you know? I mean, not that four long months. Ago. You might as well be dead. Him. <laughs> might as well be dead. Trey, I know you had some questions for Andy. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess you kind of answered them already. You know, you played sports. Uh, but if you could play one sport right now, what would it be? Basketball? It would be basketball. Yeah. you you big basketball fan over everything else? Yeah, I was better at football but i love basketball like if you ask me what do i want to do on my vacation yeah. i want to play basketball yeah. every day like yeah. i want to run full it's fun i can relate bro because basketball is my favorite sport is it yeah, yeah for sure by far uh, just because like it's you don't have to really depend too much on the team like yeah. you do on football and uh and you also don't gotta get plowed yeah. by 500 pound dudes who yeah. you know just give me a ball and some eat seven thousand calories a day if yeah. i don't have to get hit by that that's well, I remember in your uh, one of your songs, uh, you got you talking about how many pairs of sneakers you have. Mm-hmm. How many? What, what do you What do you rock? Are you a Jordan guy, Adidas, Nike? I'm uh, I'm not I'm not loyal to anyone. <laughs> I go where the heat is, yeah. and uh, yeah, I just I I like all kinds of stuff. Sometimes I like the little twenty dollar Velcro situation if mm-hmm. it's fire, mm-hmm. you know. And then sometimes I'm like, dang, I need. I Those want these fifteen hundred dollar joints, you know. Remember the Stephon Marbury sneakers? Oh, yeah. They were like yes. twenty bucks. Yeah. The, the Starberries. They Starberries. They have, who, which ones had the spinners on them? You remember those? Those were the Spreewells. Yeah, Spreewells. Yeah. Oh, Spreewell with Dada. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. you know, I I like what I like, and I I try not to follow the hype. But you know what happens? I got married, and my wife saw the obnoxious collection of sneakers, yeah. and um, so I went to IKEA, and I you know they got those little um boxes mm. it's like a bunch of little square boxes and i figured out i could put two pairs of sneakers in each box yeah, yeah. and so i bought like a 16 box and another eight by eight box to put on top of it it's all loaded nice. with sneakers so she's like so this is a problem <laughs> and uh <laughs> we gotta talk about this yeah this is a problem i remember we i went to vegas one time i was on tour and we routed through there and like one of the nike spots is there and we knew someone who worked there so mm. he was getting like 50% off oh. on top of 30% off. Yeah. And I was just, I came in with 13 pairs of sneakers. <laughs> like, who does that? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Um, that was me being single. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm married. She was just like, this is a problem. You need to stop. And so we went down to me only buying, we made an agreement. Mm-hmm. I only buy two pairs of shoes a year. Wow. Wow. A year, that's it. A wow. year. And what it's done for me is it's really made me think about what I want to get. Sure. You know what I'm saying? You don't like pull the trigger so quick on everything. Because yeah. sometimes you pull the trigger on something, you know, just because you Buyer's got it. Remorse. And then, yeah. yeah, and then you get home and you're like, why do I have like purple uptowns? Yeah. Like, yeah. when am I ever going to wear these? And they <laughs> sit in your closet for three years and then yeah. you give them away. That's awesome. But uh, it's made me a lot more cautious about how I buy. Mm-hmm. And I get rid of stuff now. I just give it away. Yeah. And so I got kids in my neighborhood that I give stuff to and, yeah. and it's cool to see those sneakers live on. I also have like 
you know, I got a bunch of followers on Instagram, so people want to send me stuff yeah. a yeah. lot of times. That's cool. So um, I'll get sneakers sometimes, and they just want me to have them, hmm. you know? And that that's cool because if I, you know, I get them and I enjoy them, and then if they're not really my thing, I still get to bless people with them mm -hmm. or yeah. clothing brands or whoever, Yeah, you know? That's pretty cool. We're talking to Andy Minio and Trey Burton, Super Bowl champ Trey Burton, here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We go a little faith element now go yep. a little deeper a little bit let's let's talk this season for the eagles was incredible and I'm hoping to have another podcast here while we're at this conference to talk about that specifically with a bunch of eagles players but trey for you you and i had a conversation on this podcast back in november about some of the things that were happening in the locker room but we haven't talked since then so take us to all the things that happened since really carson went down all these things happened nick comes in but spiritually, what was still happening in that locker room and how you guys were able to stay together from that side of things, from a faith perspective, how, how, how that happened. Yeah, it's been tough because, like you're mentioning, like a bunch of the guys who have been hurt were leaders in the yeah. locker room, guys who were you know, go-getters and guys who were recruiting people and um, having the tough conversations with guys who weren't necessarily you know, believers. And so you know, everybody just had to you know, turn it up on the field and off the field that much more. Um, and so you know, the, the, the group of guys that were still able to play um, obviously missed the dudes who were injured and the guys who were injured weren't around as much as we would like them to be. Um, but we still made a point you know, to, see, to see them once a week um, to make sure that they still felt involved, um, make sure that they still felt like they were getting poured into. Um, but then also, like, we knew we had a lot more work to do. So Were they able to still come to the team Bible studies that you talked about yep. and things like that, the couple's Bible studies? Yeah, their, yeah. their time in the facility was different. You know, they were doing treatment in the morning. They don't got to do meetings. They don't got to do really anything else but treatment. So sometimes they'd go home and sometimes they'd stay. And, mm. um, but there's, you know, usually one or two Bible studies a week that they would, a lot of them would come to. And um, it was just great, you know, to have them around, you know, whenever they felt like they wanted to be around. And, um, and so, yeah, we just had to pick up the slack, you know, and, and everybody had to turn it up a little bit more. What about Super Bowl week? What does that look like as compared to a normal week from the stuff that you guys do as the team, Bible studies and things? Did any of that take place Super disaster, Bowl week? bro. Like, it was? You know how it is, like media, media day. Oh, I know. Every, every day you're doing 45 minutes of media yeah. and the whole team's got to be there and you're in the room and just, you know, busting from the hotel to uh, Minnesota, University of Minnesota. Uh, uh, or, yeah, uh, yeah, Minnesota that yeah. we were practicing and um, we, did, but we still kept things consistent, you know, still kept trucking along and our days, you know, we usually have Bible study. We still knock those out and the night before, you know, we're still gathering and listening to music and the morning before the game, you know, we still brought our pastor in to preach and listen to music and because uh, the most important part is, you know, is our spirit and our souls. And so um, well, as long as we're full there, we'll be able to rock and roll on Sunday. Let me ask a question here. Yeah. I want to go scandalous uh -oh. for a second. So... You know, uh, he's a pastor down in Atlanta. Uh, what is his name? Louis? No. Andy Stanley? No. Trip Black Louis? dude who used to play football. Oh, I Crump. do. All right. Leon so, Leon's Crump. Leon's Crump. Yes. Used to play football, yeah. and now he's a pastor in Atlanta. And um, I've just heard stories from him that, like, rattled me. Yeah. Right? He's like, man, when I was trying to be a follower of Jesus, walk with the Lord. He's like the hardest thing for professional athletes a lot of times is women. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, I would go to the hotel and like there would be women waiting in the hotel just waiting to try to pick up a football player. Yeah. And like would say, if they, if they didn't know who you were, they would just say your number. Say, hey, 56 or whatever, mm -hmm. and just be waiting there because they want to get taken down. Yeah. And I'm like, yo. And they, you know, they're probably... Uh, baddies too so you're like you're you're working with a lot of you're out of town you're at there. this they're baddies you know their freaking temptation is right there yeah. yeah you know and i can only imagine that stuff being heightened at super bowls or mm -hmm. you know when that stuff happens what is that like in and i know you're a married man you're a yeah. faithful dude and you're married with kids and all that stuff but uh one do you see that still see that often Two, does that ever make its way onto your radar, or do you guys just have different systems set up to just kind of mosey around it? Mm -hmm. um, and three, like what you know, what do you see? Oh, I just want to know. I'm curious. Well, I, mean, how... I, I, I could I could toss the same question back to you. You know, and I'm yeah. sure that you have the same temptations. You know, and I, I sure. one of the questions I was going to ask you is, you know, how do you do it when you travel so much and you're gone, you're away right. from home for so long, you know, I, and I don't know like how many weeks of the year it is, but I'm sure it's a ton, you know, oh, yeah. and you're away from your wife and away from your family, you know, and you're with yeah. your boys. 
but somehow you make it work, you sure, know, and yep. so somehow, like, you know, I'm, you can easily relate to this, like, you still got to get in the word, you know, you still got to um, cast down every bad thought, you know, sure. and it's there, you know, it's, it's, it's if you want to act on it or not, you know, and that's why, like, you know, temptation isn't the sin, acting on the temptation sure. is the sin. Right. And so, but I'm just wondering if it's as aggressive as Leonce was telling me, because he was making, I was yeah. like, yo, that's aggressive, well, that's it, not like, that's not like flee for sure. temptation as like, it's a thought, it's like right, right there. there it's yeah. as aggressive as aggressive as you make it because if you're out in the spots you know where women are going mm. to be if i'm at the club it's gonna be it's gonna be as aggressive right as it gets you know what i'm sure. saying but if i'm in the room with my homies or i'm off, if i'm staying at the hotel or you know whatever it may look like you sure. know it's not as aggressive you know but if i choose sure. to go out to the bars or if i choose in which is there's nothing wrong with doing those things but you got to know that you know is a possibility right. of someone trying you you know and you got to be on guard for trying to test your gangster that, for sure <laughs> sheesh for sure Trey, yeah. has, has there been a moment, not naming names, where you've seen guys on the team that you want to, need to encourage that have kind of fallen into that temptation that Andy's talking about? Yeah, guys always need encouragement. Yeah. You know, and the number one thing guys don't want to do is talk about their problems. But when you're able to, you know, get in and get have that relationship with somebody where they trust you, and you're not, you know, throwing their mail all in the yard and letting other people, you know, it's just that intimate time that you have um, with somebody. Uh, that's really when, I, for me personally, like it's the most beneficial, and I'm, you're able to make the biggest mm. impact. Um, but then also, you know, there are the guys, and I, I'm, you know, one of the. Back in the day, I was one of the biggest, biggest um, guys that would do this. You know, I have an accountability partner, and I don't want to go see him, you know, as much as I, you know, would want to. Or uh -huh. I, I, he's calling me, and I'm ah, you know, I'll call him back in a half yeah, yeah, an hour. Yeah. Or, you know. <laughs> so there are those guys too, but yeah. I, I can relate to that because that that was me, you know. Yeah. And somebody who you know had one foot on one side of the line and one foot on the other side of the line, you know, and you know trying to perfectly balance the world and um, my faith, and so um, I can easily and I and I think you know people can respect that because I walked that for a long time. Um, so I'm, I know how to, you know, maneuver. Like yeah. one of my buddies, you know, we would talk about. Uh, I went down to the gutter to get him, whereas normally normal people wouldn't go down there. But I was in the gutter, you know, and I know the path down there. You know what I'm saying? I know where he was hanging out. I know all those types of things. So sure. he can relate to me, you know, in a sense. Yeah. And so like we we joke about it all the time. Like man, I went to the gutter to get you. You know, we're we're out and we're both good now. Um, but you know, I, I'm comfortable in doing those types of things because I've been in it and I lived it for a while. Andy, what about you? What is it like? In your world, as a musician, yeah. as a you know, playing all different types of mm -hmm. venues and places. Because you're going from hotel to hotel, like yes. you're going from different groups of people to different groups of people in different cities. Right. And when one one night you, you don't want to perform, but you got to, you know, because it's yeah. your job. So like, how do you deal with those temptations? Yeah. You know, and I know for me, like if I'm left in a room for too long, it's not a good deal by myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I need a roommate. I need somebody, you know, yeah. to be around and somebody because you can always say oh I'll call you when I'm struggling yeah 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 but what are the chances you really do call you know what I'm saying yeah. or you could really say hey text me you know at this time at night but you know what what about if it's an hour before that when I'm hurting you know yeah so. so actually right over there that's my tour manager uh Joe Angel hi Joe Angel hey what's the one thing that happens every time we get a hotel room the number one rule that we have is that we don't let people have their own room, especially Andy. They're well, y'all can have your own room if you want. Right. Just me. Yeah, I don't but want he has a specific rule yeah. that he will never have his own hotel room. Perfect. Right. Every trip. As an accountability deal. Yes. Right? Yeah, I just yeah. don't, you know, it's just you leave room for stuff and it, and it can creep up. And that's my thing. You know what I'm saying? He said nobody can have their own. They, people can have their own room. They want to pay for it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm paying for all the rooms too. So y'all got to bunk True. up. True. But, uh, for me, like, sometimes we'll do an event and they'll be like, oh, we're going to cover hotels too. And we'll get there and they'll be like, hotel room for you, hotel yeah. room for you. And I'll be like, Meh. I'm yeah. like, cool, yo, Ray, somebody else just come crash in the room with me. Uh, just because you leave room for stuff, man, it always, it, um, it just, it's just easier. It's more helpful when you, when you just put things in place. Yeah. And so I try to, as much as I can, and, and if I let other people know, then that helps too. Another thing that uh, that I struggled with for a long time is porn. Mm. Like especially when you're on the road, mm -hmm. um, like you're on the road, you're away from your your wife, lonely. and then you're lonely. And yeah. then a lot of times you'll be alone or like in a tour bus. I'll get into my bunk, yeah. and my phone is where my alarm clock and all that other stuff is. But at the same time, you're chilling in your bunk, and those temptations come. So to this day, I have a lock on my phone. I have no idea what the passcode is. He does. 
where uh, I basically have like inappropriate content blocked, mm. Mm. you know? And so there's a passcode to get that out. And I had my tour manager put the passcode in. I don't know what the passcode is. Yeah. So even when I'm home, yeah. like if, one time I went to search, like I was looking for blank, I, you know, I'm a musician and I sell merchandise. Yeah. And so I'm looking for like blank t-shirts, like different cottons and different stuff. Yeah. And one of the names of the website was like adult t-shirts. Dot com or something like that and it wouldn't even let me access that because they had the word adult yeah. and i was wow. like this is so dumb yeah. but it's a small price to pay just to sure. to try to eliminate another form of temptation um it's always encouraging though like hearing other people what other people do like the extremes you know there's multiple guys who i've talked to who do the same like lock or they do like a different app you know for the internet so that it filters out sure certain things i mean yeah if, let's be real like every man struggles with that Yes. Yeah, you know what for I mean? sure. That is and, a very real story. And people want to, you know, hide it and act like you know they're too good for it. And but nah, bro. Like I know, there's, there's, it's ruined a lot of people's lives. It's ruined a lot of marriages. Um, sure. I know it impacts me. You know, yep. specifically just for my struggle with it and um, and my fight for the majority of my life with it. So, a couple yeah. more questions here, Andy Minio, Trey Burton on the podcast. Andy, you've talked about a couple years back going into sort of a dark place, a dark time in your life. Uh, I don't know how deep it was as far as falling away from the Lord or whatever, but can sure. you kind of talk about that a little bit and what that would look like and yeah. um, just what you learned maybe in that experience going through that? Yeah, about 2016, 2017. Uh, so this is recent. Okay. Just going through a pretty, uh, a pretty rough time in my faith where I was, I was fearful of losing a lot. Hmm. Um, I was actually thinking about it today. Uh, anxiety is the product of fear and control. So you're afraid of something and you want to try to control it. And that's what ends up leading to that, uh, that angst. Um, and when I really started thinking about what I've been afraid of, you know, I started going to counseling. I did some other things that have really helped me process what I've been going through. And it was fear of losing, losing creativity, which would mean I would lose mm-hmm. my artistry. Mm-hmm. And then in my artistry is a lot of where my identity yeah, is. Sure. You know, like if I'm not making art and making songs and doing this, then what am I? Mm-hmm. You know, where... That's a big thing for a lot of people. What you do is like who you are. That is a very real issue That's for a real, many, for, many men. Yeah. Right, for yes. so many people. I mean, everybody, men, Especially women. Especially when they're exiting their, you know, their, and I'm talking about football and, you know, sports. And, like, sure. When you're exiting football, like, what do you do now? Like, what do I do now? Gone, take yeah. it. So even that, like, even Trey being like, when are you going to drop new music? What, you retire, man? He don't know, but that gave me, like, a heart attack. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, right? right? But that's my own insecurity. That's not you. That's yeah. you cracking a joke. But that's the stuff that I was dealing with. That, on top of it, that's when the election was happening. Mm-hmm. That's when um, kind of my faith was really being shaken. My, I, I kind of am a product of like white evangelical preaching and teaching through yeah. like twenty to two thousand and eight to like yeah. two thousand fourteen. These mm-hmm. are the main guys that I learned from, understood the Bible from, sure. all that. And uh, slowly, but slowly and over time, I've just realized how limited that perspective can be. And what essentially started to happen was a bit of an unraveling. Like you pull it one string and then everything starts to unravel Mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, oh man, if some of these guys that I really looked up to in my faith were really, really off about certain things, how much else Mm -hmm. is off about what I understand about the Bible or about God or about me you know what i'm saying yeah. america like and and i'm i keep on discovering more and more and as i'm discovering it's shaking my faith um you know just to be like oh man i didn't realize how deeply in bed like the idea of being american and being christian and being white are like all tied together yeah. and it's taken a ton, tons of relationships that i have with people who don't look like me who yeah. don't think like me um and sitting and learning from them you know we got a group text going on with me and a bunch of the guys and lecrae and everybody's in there and we're just always talking through these issues and bringing stuff up and and um I think what really shook up my faith pretty heavy is and i don't i don't know where everybody stands on their political spectrum and stuff but the election of Donald Trump during 2016 primarily being fueled by the white conservative evangelical population really making a strong push to put him in office because he represented, quote unquote, a lot of their values. That thing just like rocked me. Mm. Um, so I don't know what everybody thinks about Donald Trump or whatever, but my, my perspective on it was like, wait, how could someone 
in, in a lot of ways in my mind who does not represent so much about Christianity be so unabashedly backed by Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, it was a real conflict for me. Like, I, I didn't understand how that could happen. So who did you um, seek out, like, to talk this through? Was it your peers? and your Yeah, well, what I realized parties? is a lot of my peers were going through the very same thing. Mm-hmm. And so everyone was kind of, like, in this, like, depression. Because at the same time, you also have to remember, like, how many black kids were getting murdered yeah. by cops. Yeah. And it was, like, on, it was, like, every week a new yeah. video was coming out. Yeah. And I wasn't seeing Christians who I looked up to all these years in other areas, step up and speak up and help be a part of the solution. And that was destroying me. I was like, wait, so do y'all really even believe what you're talking about, about justice and about love and about forgiveness? And and, yeah, yeah, like, so then I'm like, wait, maybe this whole thing is bull. Mm. And that's really when I started like, I had to, I had, I came to this weird place where I had to go, I need to let go of everything I know about God. Wow. Because I don't know if any of what I've studied about him is true. If it's come from these people. Yeah. And that was the most terrifying thing for me because I said, what if I let go of this? Will I let go of God forever? And that's when I, it felt like I let go and I had a trust fall moment where I was like, God, I'm going to let go and I'm going to start to relearn yeah. who you are. And in that, he met me cool. in yeah. such a, a profound way because it, I came back to a lot of the same things I had already believed, mm-hmm. but I finally learned them myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just taking sure. what so-and-so, you know, seven-year-old white preacher from yeah. the South had to say. It was like, oh, wait, I'm going to study this and it's going to be mine. Wow. Um, so that was kind of your rock bottom. That was, I mean, I don't know if it's rock from bottom. but it was Yeah, yeah, faith perspective. It was yeah. definitely like a shaky place. And I'm still like, there's still remnants of that like i'm still working through this like last week i went and saw latino history for morons by john leguizamo in uh in in manhattan he's got a broadway play me and my wife went for date night and i just learned look i'm a 29 year old man i just learned and never learned this in my school that there was 75 million native americans and 71 million of them were murdered wow. mm. by col- by Spanish colonization, yeah. right? And I'm yeah. like, that's the biggest genocide in human history, yeah, and wow. I never even knew about yeah. it until last week. Yeah. And the soil I'm living on right here, right now in America, belonged to them. Mm-hmm. I was like, how did I not learn about this in school? Yeah. So there's constantly these things happening where like, oh man, our history says a lot about who we are and where we are. Mm-hmm. You know, and Black Panther came out this week. It's just a lot going on. But yeah. it uh you know, it's really shaken up and made me have to reevaluate the way I think and process the world. And I'm still going through it right now. Um but it was a, a feeling of being lost, mm-hmm. you know. Trey, you ever been there in yeah, that moment yeah, where you've sure. had to kind of challenge yourself and be like, what do I believe here? What is this yeah, faith? It happens all the time. Yeah. Um it, you know, it kind of re um um, rewiring your brain um, in a way like you grow up you know you believe what your parents believe you know you believe what your mentor believes wh- whoever's bringing you to church you know um, and it really isn't until you have to experience Christ on your own um, and by yourself I, I remember Carl said something like that today like uh, something about like you don't believe Carl Lentz of yeah, course Carl Lentz mm-hmm. said something like you don't truly believe in God until he's all you have and yeah. so like I, that really hit home for me, you know, because I'm living off my mom's faith and I'm living off my grandparents' faith because mm-hmm. they're the ones who's taking me to church, you know, and whatever they believe, I'm believing, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know any better at the time. And it really wasn't until I got to college, you know, and was on my own and had to make my own decision to go to church, um, my own decision, you know, to go to Bible study, to read and to pray and not, you know, piggyback off of a relative's, you know, choice. Um, and that's really, you know, I kind of I hit rock bottom. Um, with my in my life uh, spiritually, you know, when I was a junior, um, and my I was supposed to be you know the spiritual leader on the team, and I was supposed to be the guy who followed Tebow, and you know was just you know to be able to follow his tracks and just keep things going at University of Florida, and um, so I, I walk in my junior year, I walk into my girlfriend's apartment, who's now my wife, and um, she's bawling, crying, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, what, you know, what's what's, what's happening? I'm, I've been faithful, you know, these last you know a couple months, you know, we, I, I haven't been in, my, in the past, but. I have been recently, and um, she's crying, and she hands me a pregnancy test, and she says I'm pregnant, and I'm mm. like, yo, and so that shook me to the core, you know, because now I had a choice whether to be with her or leave like my dad did, or I had a choice to keep the child or, you know, get rid of the child, you know, like so many other people around me have done, sure. and so um, it, it was really, like, 
really the bottom. You know, I had to read kind of what you're saying, relearn who God is and what you're saying really resonates with me as well. Like God met my wife and I where we were, you know, mm. at that time we were, you know, broken, but he met us exactly where we were. We didn't have to, we recommitted our lives to him and, you know, we're really trying to, you know, follow um, we knew we screwed up and we knew, you know, we didn't do it the right way, but we were, we were you know, sorry and, and asked for forgiveness. And um, he really, you know, met us where we were. And, you know, now we're here five years later, you know, married and have three kids. And, um, you know, just kind of have a definitely, definitely a different um, lens that we see, you know, God through. And so it's just sure. been special for us. Yeah. Mm. Andy, I'll ask you this as we start to wrap up. Influence platform, being a believer, mm. being known the sort of fame that comes with it, which is a weird thing. And you kind of joked at the concert you had earlier tonight about like being famous, but regular still being famous. right. Yeah. Regular <laughs> famous. Just the idea of fame and, and being uh, open about your faith and just the tug of the world and what that looks yeah. like being this sort of, you know, uh, person that people know, you yeah. know what I mean? Dealing with that. And as that came about, what is, how has that been for you? Maybe even since this dark time for you, but even yeah. before that, it's a strange tension to have yeah. uh, some sort of fame and platform and then to also be, you know, openly uh, open about what you believe yeah. because it's never, it's never a fair fight, you know. It's like there, there's always – when somebody said this, like the higher up you go, like the easier of a target you are. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because, like, you the know. The bigger the target is. Yeah, the bigger the target. Well, it's, it's like you make yourself, when you put yourself out there. Yeah. So I put myself out there to make music. Right. You also make yourself available to be shot at. Yeah. Right? Sure. So that's, like, part of what comes with the, the influence is also the, uh, the praise and the criticism. Yeah. And so um, I just realized this. Like, you're never holy enough for certain people. And then you're way too holy and weird yeah. for others. Yeah. And it's just like. It's a strange tension. Can't please everyone. So, yeah, and, you know, and and what's also weird is when you become known for something, forget trying to change. Mm -hmm. It's like that people don't want you to change or, or to evolve or to grow. They want you to be exactly what they want you to be, and they'll be very vocal about it from their Twitter, you know. The keyboard. <laughs> yeah, from their <laughs> keyboard thug. And yeah. it's just like we don't, make, we don't make space for celebrities and people to change. Mm. Because we always want them to be that one thing for us. And it's like, that's not who people are. Yeah. People grow and they yeah. evolve and they have different views. And like now I probably look, I look back at interviews I did five years ago and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. how embarrassing. And I'll probably look back on this interview and be like, how embarrassing <laughs> and silly in a few years. It's just like, but it lives on the internet forever. Yeah. You yeah. know? So, you know, I just... You, ch you try to be faithful with what you got while you have it. And, mm. and I always try to put this in my interviews and stuff. Like, this is what I feel today. Right. Yeah. It might change yeah. tomorrow. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you do the best you can. But well, let me ask you this real quick. Minor league. Tell me about that. I told you guys I was going to ask you about that kind of conversation when, you know, in a bunch of different directions. But I know that you're working with this sort of, is it a label kind of thing going yeah. on with minor league? Can you tell us about yeah. Developing that, what that is. Yeah, Minor League is a brand uh, yeah. that I started, and um, me, uh, Delgis, Mustafa, and Words Play, we started this thing, and, and uh, shout out Zeke Elliott, too. We've all just been contributing our resources and our time to create this space for people who um, want to find treasure. And, uh, like, I just don't, I don't feel like there's a, a space for real, or it's, it's happening now, where people can be authentically Christian and authentically be artists and not have to feel the pressure to um, succumb to either of those things mm -hmm. in a way that dilutes either or the other. So that's kind of a weird way of saying, like, you don't have to be this one model idea of a Christian. You know what I'm saying? In order a lot to, of that? Because yeah. I've, heard, I've heard stories like, uh, I think it was Katy Perry, who was a gospel singer, and yes. they said her yeah. boobs were too big, and mm -hmm. that she couldn't be the face of any... Sure. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's just weird. And then she rebelled from that, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. It's just, of course, you know, because that's such like a s absurd thing. Uh, yeah, there's I mean, that's one thing that's cool about you, though. You know, what I mean, because the time I've been following you, like you haven't changed. You know, you've still been the same sure. dude. You're still clapping back at people on social media. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like voicing your should. opinion on, you know, certain sure. things. Sure, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's some of the weirdness is like 
I, someone told me, was talking to me today, and they were like, hey, man, love your music. I love that I can play it for my kids. Yeah. And I was like, you can't play all my music for your kids, you know? Yeah. But so a lot of times people associate something being Christian, being synonymous with appropriate for all ages. Yeah. yeah. And that's not even true. No. Uh, not even close. Yeah. So, you know, there's just like, when you, whenever you say you're a Christian uh, publicly, it usually comes with a lot of baggage that has nothing to do with you, and that's the really tough part. Yeah. Um, so that's what minor league is, is there to do, is just to be like, yeah, we might not look like everything that you expected Christians to look like, but that's okay. It's a collective of miners. And, that's you cool. know, miners as in coal mining, where you're digging for treasure, yeah. you know, um, going into dangerous places to pull out goods for people. And uh, so we started that collective, and we got some new music coming out of there, and it's Good. tight. When is uh, or where can people find more info? Just at your website? Yeah, go to uh, whatever you're on Instagram, Twitter, yeah, you know, Facebook. You can look up Andy Minio. Find it all there. Yeah, and then Minor cool. League is M I N E R. M I N E R. Yeah, okay. miners like miners, coal miners, diggers. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. All right, let's finish it up with Trey. Yeah. So you won a Super Bowl. Now you're a free agent. We're going to run this before we know what team that you end up on. Cool. So you got a couple weeks here to figure out your future. What's kind of going through your mind and maybe what's the Lord been challenging you on in just this season of, okay, I just won the Super Bowl and I'm just trying to enjoy that, yeah. but I got a future to figure out here with the business side of the NFL. <laughs> Make it rain. Make it rain. Hey. Doing, doing the money side, you're funny, bro. <laughs> no, you know, it's actually really cool, bro. It's something I've never really got to experience in the mm-hmm. sense of like being wanted um, and being able to choose where I, uh, where I go. Um, I was recruited really early. Uh, I committed to Florida my sophomore year, but it was really uh, it was a deal. Urban is famous for this, calling you and saying like, "Hey, you have a scholarship. You have 24 hours to commit. If you don't commit, you don't have a scholarship anymore." And so it was really one of those deals, you know. And that's the biggest biggest school in the state of Florida, and you know, a place that I you know dreamed of playing. So yeah. committed right away, um, and then going into the NFL, I was undrafted, and so nobody wanted me then. And uh, Philly was really one of the only options that I had. Yeah. Back then, they didn't yeah. want me. <laughs> no, <I'm hot. laughs> they all no. Uh, yeah, so Philly, I, I you know, chose to go to Philly just, yeah. just by default, you know, for the most part. And so now um, winning the Super Bowl, it's always a great deal to be a free agent after that. And uh, so I'm just sitting back and, you know, relaxing, hanging with my family. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't been home too much since uh, the Super Bowl. And I uh, just want to try to figure out there's a lot of things, you know, that go into a decision on where you play, you know, quarterback and scheme yeah. and those types of things. But um, my heart, you know, especially since being at this conference has really changed. Um, in my perspective of where I want to go. And I just feel, you know, God's just calling me to go to a spot, not just because of football. You know, obviously football is number one. You know, that's my job. That's what I do. Um, but I need, I want to go to a city that needs change, you know, that mm. needs somebody to go in there and, you know, just do what God is calling them to do. And um, there's there's a couple options of places to go. And um, I really want to be, I really want to be pulled that way and not, you know, just strictly on football. And so I want to make an impact, you know, off the field. You know, that's how you become a legend, you know, where you, um, football ends eventually and you know people will forget about you but you know the things you do off the field is really um, what's key and so we were able to partner with a bunch of um, organizations in Philly and we made a pretty decent you know impact there and yes. um, just a group of guys that we have we're just able to do so much you know and That's so tight. I kind of want to go um, knowing the blueprint of what we've been able to do in Philly and you know kind of like the pioneering of um, faith in the sense of like a collective group of got group of guys um, I kind of want to go somewhere else, you know, and start it. Yeah. Um, I would love to, be, love to be back in Philly. You know, that's comfortable, you know, but of course. Um, we're called to be uncomfortable, you know, hey. like, like your last album. Hey, that album, sounds like so. an album title or it something. Was, it was, I, uncomfortable. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and, I, and I'm cool. I like being uncomfortable. That's kind of, you know, when yeah. I seek God the most. And so um, I'm, I'm up for whatever. My wife and I are, you know, on the same page, and yeah. um, we just want to, you know, do something special. That's cool. One thing I can promise you, no matter where you end up, you will always be a legend yeah. in Philadelphia. Hundred percent for the Philly special. Hey, ain't that the on. truth, right? Is that Philly's first ever? First, first ever oh Super Bowl. Oh my gosh! Right. Yeah. So no matter what crazy? you do, no matter what, where you go, you're gonna be sixty years old on the ESPN yeah. thirty for thirty. Show. I'm like, ah, oh, we're around. The Philly, now. Yeah. The Philly, Philly special. special. Trying to draw it on the chalkboard. <laughs> By that point, <laughs> anytime in the just the words PH that come up. You're going to be like, ah, oh, nah, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. But you always got that ring. Listen, this has been awesome. Where's the ring? That's what I want to know. They don't we get don't the ring get, yet. We don't, yeah, they, uh, the end of this month, they have it all designed, but we won't get it till probably June or something. Yeah. Okay, are you wearing the ring? I will be, yeah. No, sure. like, are you going to wear it 
all day, every day. Not all day, but for like special occasions, like like podcast with you. Yeah, oh. for sure. When I'm around, let's when revisit I'm around this. You, yeah, let's do this. Once it gets the ring. Yes. If I had a, and they're obnoxious too. Aren't oh, they, they are. Huge. They're, the Patriots last year was insane. It's like the size of this gonna, thing I'm holding right now. It's a tic tac box on yeah. your finger <laughs> of diamonds. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. exactly what it is. Dude, so I would have to wear it to the grocery store, like every opportunity. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Philly Spesh. Right here. So you would get it on Remember, your pinky. I'd get it on my pinky, okay. and I would let it sag we were trying, we were, off to the side because <laughs> it's so big, it's got to hang. We were trying to get, like, the brass knuckle, you know what I mean? Like, get two knuckle, like your pinky and your ring finger, and then oh, maybe even your like, middle finger, you know yes. what I'm saying? So you got it, like, a brass knuckle. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fat. That's a lot. No, you got to get the design of Philly Special in that ring, though, somehow. Yeah, I know, somehow. That would be cool. Maybe on, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it on the inside because no one would see it, so, yeah. All right, yeah, one more sorry. question. Go ahead, Andy. I mean... Why are you guys kissing that thing, man? I didn't kiss it. That's disgusting. Is it not oh, disgusting? Oh, yeah. You Everybody's some, bringing some the Super Some guy puts Bowl it under trophy. his armpit for a second, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you lick it now, too. Uh, what is going on over here? <laughs> yeah. And how about your man Kevin Hart? Yeah. Couldn't even get on stage. He wouldn't even let him up. That was probably, he stole the show, I'm sorry. He stole that moment. Yeah. Well, you know, the cameras are panning like, man, let me on stage, man. Oh, man. The exactly. best part, man, I don't know who you are. I can't let you up The here. best part is Zach Ertz is standing right next to him. All this is going on. Zach could have easily been like, nah, let him come through. But Zach's like, <laughs> He Ertz. wasn't going to have anything to do with nah, it. You know, Ertz is it. getting some heat, man. For what? For what? I'm, so I'm sitting next to a Dallas fan when we're watching the game. Yeah. And you know what's going on in his mouth. Yeah. Oh, same play, Des Bryant. And I was like, bro. Different play. Your man... It's a completely, completely different play. Different. He had the he extended it away from his body. He made the like, football move, right? Three, right? three steps and then extended it. Yeah. Come on, man! Don't give me that garbage. You gotta change that. Listen, hey, this is awesome, guys. Thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Appreciate it, Andy yeah, Minio and Trey, ba- Trey Burton. Yeah. yeah, Philly special. Look at the flick of the wrist. <laughs> and we do appreciate Andy Minio, rapper extraordinaire, and Trey Burton. Philly special Super Bowl champion and free agent tight end for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. We taped this a couple weeks ago at a conference in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm looking forward to seeing where Trey ends up. Trey has a decision to make. This is the week that free agency in the NFL begins, March 14th, and today is March 12th that we release this podcast. So in a couple days, Trey Burton may have a new NFL team. And of course, we'll be able to update you on that on SportsSpectrum.com, but it was really great to hear Andy's kind of vulnerability and transparency and the struggles that he's going through and has gone through in the past. Uh, I really like Trey's uh, discussion as well about temptation and just what it's like to be famous and to be an influencer and to be in the spotlight and be an NFL player who travels a lot and be a rapper who's traveling every single night when he's on tour and I just thought this was a great podcast. So we appreciate Andy for joining us. You can find out more about Andy Minio at andyminio.com and his new album magic and bird came out last August. Still pretty new, still awesome. And of course his famous song, you can't stop me won the number one walk up song on ESPN.com a couple years ago. Uh, So you can't stop me magic and bird andyminio.com. Check all of that out. And of course, Trey Burton, you can follow Trey, on Twitter at Trey Burton eight. And it'll be interesting to see what number he takes when he goes to his new team, or if he stays with the Philadelphia Eagles, Uh, he wore 88 his last year in Philly. So that'll be fun to watch too. We appreciate both of them for joining us here on the podcast. And we appreciate you for tuning in and you can reach us on Twitter as well at sports underscore spectrum. You can email us here. You can email me directly, Jason at sports Let us know what you think of the podcast. And of course, if you liked it, if you thought this podcast was something that you want others to hear, please share it, share it on your Twitter, share it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram, take a screenshot, uh, take the link, whatever it is, and share it on uh, all of your social media feeds. That would be wonderful and you can leave a review as well leave a review on itunes let people know that you heard the podcast and what you think of it that helps get the word out and get more people checking out the stories on the intersection of sports and of faith thanks so much for joining us here and we'll see you next time right here on the sports spectrum podcast